well, we had to make a quick pit stop at the Flying J in St. Agathe because me being the genius that I am, as if I need to tell you, uh, the me being the genius that I am left my necklace that I got from my wife for Christmas, which is real gold, <laughs> left it in the shower at the truck stop. And somebody here, because we live in friendly Manitoba, somebody here found it in there and brought it up to the front desk so that I could pick it up when I went past next time. And uh, I called in today because I was freaking out, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. I thought I was in the truck and I wasn't in the truck. Got back in the truck, couldn't find it. I was freaking out. I told Britt I can't find it. I shouldn't have told her, but I told her. And uh, I called the last place I could remember staying at, which was here. We had a shower here last Thursday, right? And yeah, I had left it hanging in the bathroom and someone was nice enough to return it up to the main fuel desk and all the employees were honest enough not to take it home and today I called here and sure enough it was here I came and picked it up and one of the most sentimental pieces of jewelry I have ever owned I don't own much jewelry I own about, you can see about as much as I own right in this shot right here my two most sentimental pieces right here that was practically like leaving my wedding ring somewhere dodged a bullet there the only mistake I made was I told my wife <laughs> no she's not gonna trust me with fancy things anymore but dodged that bullet so let's get out of here we're on our way down to Urbana Illinois Urbana 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 U-R-B-A-N-A -A, something like that bring them this uh, lift truck whatever you want to call it oversized forklift I don't know gonna bring it down there for him and then from there uh, I've got a reload taking me to Ontario I believe I don't have all the details on it yet so I can't really confirm that but I was told I will be going to Ontario for another load of that magnificent 63,000 pound steel load tell you what those loads are really heavy for my truck I really don't like pulling them they got, a fan, they got a couple of very fancy, very shiny quarters attached to them, so I, I like my quarters. I'll collect as many as I can. But if they didn't have those quarters, I tell you what, I wouldn't pull them. Some of them even got a loony. Do you remember last week when we were going down through North Dakota and we had to go around that detour because of the floodwaters? And I told you the crest was making its way north into Canada? Here it is. The water has made it across the border. A nice neighborly gift from the Americans. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's getting pretty high here. Look at this bridge. It's like touching the bottom of the bridge here already. On Not on the other side, but on this side. The other side's got a newer, higher bridge. Wow, it's like driving right across the water almost. And it keeps getting higher and higher, so... It's... Crazy to see. I wonder how these farmers are feeling here, watching all their fields just get buried in water every year. Every year. I mean, this year's a little worse than some years, but it's not the worst we've seen in my lifetime. Lots of water. So we're in southern Manitoba here. We're about 15 minutes from the American border on Highway 75. So we're here in North Dakota now. And uh, the water is still pretty high here too. I think we're losing our lane up ahead here. That could be because water is coming onto the road in the right lane. Coming over. Oh, they want us to slow down to 45, okay. Lots of water. on you here. I think he's looking at the other direction, but might be looking at me too. You stay. 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 Thank you. I'm 
sure you're a fine gentleman. But you don't need to be chasing me down. Look at all the water here. Yikes. Absolutely nuts. Look at that. That building's totally underwater. <laughs> well, I guess not totally underwater, but you know what I mean. It's like a sea. The river that flooded is that way. And it goes all the way out here. And all this water is headed up north to Canada. <laughs> this is a little bit more than usual. Uh, we don't usually get flooded this bad every year, but we, we do get some something like this every year. I mean, this isn't a surprise. The people who live in southern Manitoba, especially southeast Manitoba around where we live and up here along the, the western edge and eastern edge where Minnesota and North Dakota meet, they're used to this. Oh, they want us to go right down to 25 miles an hour. Really? It's a little uh, intense, a little overkill, wouldn't you think? That's 40 kilometers an hour on a 75 mile an hour freeway. Okay. You're the boss. 25 miles an hour. Oh, look at this. It's coming through here. That's why. Wow, they got like these big long sandbags here holding the water back. Wow. Oh, well, at least they left the interstate open this time it's just it goes like a mile that way at least hmm that's what we get for having snowstorms in April okay no more snowstorms in April it's not good it does this pretty bright it's 10 to 9 p.m. and we still got another two months to go to the longest day of the year I love this season I love it we're here in Fargo North Dakota we're about to turn east onto Interstate 94 my regular route we've all been here through my vlogs like countless times it's been a good day of driving so far the truck has been running great uh, fuel economy has been fantastic because we have a wind that's pushing us down south out of Canada. It's a pretty strong wind too and we're just, we got our sails out and we're just sailing. It's coming a little bit from the west too, so as we turn east onto the I-94, we're also going to be able to catch some of that wind in our sails and have it push us into Minnesota towards Wisconsin. I don't know how far we're gonna go tonight yet, kind of tired <laughs> my first day back on the road I don't like having such a hard day my first day back but we got to do what we got to do right I'd love to go another two hours but, uh, kilometers. Keep to the right on I no, no, no. East I two West. hours Karen not two kilometers In two kilometers we'll pull in for the night what do you think what is it two kilometers two hours I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore Karen, you take the wheel. I'm going to bed. So this is a very popular route for Canadian drivers. 
anyone who's coming from the Midwest, Northern Midwest, or the Eastern US to Western Canada comes through here. Now, sometimes they continue going on down I-94, out towards uh, US-52. That's where I usually go. If I'm not going to Manitoba, if I'm not going home, I'll usually cross through into uh, Saskatchewan at Portal. But this intersection here, pretty much anybody who's going to Western Canada from the U.S., the either nor northern Midwest or the East, comes through here. And so far, I mean, so good. We're not going to be going through Chicago on this trip, though my next load will be taking me into Ontario, so we'll probably be going down the I-80 through southern Chicago, you know. They still haven't fixed that bridge connection. Thanks. But, uh, right through, you know, northern Indiana on the tollway there, the crossroads of America. And, uh, we'll see what traffic's like. I mean, I'm sure it's quite a bit less than what we're used to in that area. Which has been great. You know, this, as terrible as this whole pandemic has been, uh, you know, the silver lining to this dark cloud is that my fuel prices are way down, uh, which is helping us out a lot. And traffic is way down, which is obviously helping us out a lot as well. Continue on this road for 258 kilometers. Well, we're at the big chief truck stop. We went a little bit further than our usual Roths, eh? I wanted a change of scenery. I'm just past Fergus Falls here. And we're gonna pull in here for the night. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. You have arrived at your destination. On the right side, Big Chief Truck Stop. Big Chief Truck Stop. Thanks for letting me hang out here for a bit, Chief. I'm gonna go and find a parking spot and hit the sack, as they say. They got really good pastries in here, by the way. I stop here often. Delicious donuts. But I warn you, they're addicting. What do we got going on here? What do we got going on? It looks pretty full here. Let's turn my lights off so I'm not blinding people. Oh, Mr. Volvo there took my parking spot. How dare you? How dare you? Maybe there's one spot behind him yet. Aha, there's still a spot behind him. Right behind him there. Oh, ow, 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 easy. Easy. Take her easy there, bud. Oh, look at that Peterbilt over there. It's got like uh, blue lights on it. That's fancy. See it? Here. There it is. See? Very fancy. I'm gonna turn myself around here. Give me 40 acres and I'll turn this rig around. And then I'll go to bed. And then I'll go to bed. How about that? I'm gonna park in front of this Mr. Kenworth guy. Oh, I should close my window. Shoot. Oh, I had to force myself to put the phone down. Oh, it won't stop dinging at me now. <laughs> oh man, I got distracted on Facebook and I've been sitting here for 30 minutes. I haven't even gotten out of my seat yet. <sighs> All right, well. Bed is calling me, and there's a, a toothbrush and toothpaste on my bed. Well, there's a hint. At least I won't forget. Oh, let's get up. Oh, oops. Sorry. I banged you on my sunglasses. Oh, my. Am I tired? All right, I'm an old man, apparently. Okay. Getting older every day. Woo! Isn't it fun? Oh, I shouldn't complain yet, because I got a long way to go and a lot more older to get. <laughs> oh, isn't life grand? But it is special because it is life. It's a gift. Even the aching, sore days. <laughs> but I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. So, uh, other than just being a little sore, did some heavy lifting yesterday. So, just uh, feel like I like went to the gym. <clears throat> feeling strong. The pain is a good pain. It's a good pain. So, uh, thanks for hanging out with me today. Time for me to go to bed. And time for you to go to bed or go back to work or go back to what you were doing. Go back to your quarantine life.
I hope you guys are all keeping busy and uh, not going crazy. But uh, everything's going fine for us so far. Britt is off work. She's at home because of her asthma. Uh, from what I've heard, the Canadian Emergency Relief Fund has been released to all the people who need it. And uh, they've made it pretty easy to access, so that's good. So uh, we're all taken care of up here in the Great White North, and uh, we're very thankful for that. Uh, just be very careful when you do get that, because it is taxable income. Uh, so growing up with a mom as an accountant, you got I think of these things. This is all taxable. When, you, when they send you your $2,000 every month for the next four months... That's all taxable, okay? You're gonna have to pay income tax on that. You're gonna have to pay all your regular regular taxes that will come off your paycheck. So treat it as if a paycheck came to you without any of those deductions taken off, all right? Make sure you put a lot of it away. And uh, there, there is also the fine print. Make sure you read the fine print. They call it the SERB, right? SERF, Canadian Emergency Relief Fund. You know what I'm talking about. The 2,000 bucks the government's sending everybody uh, to get us through this pandemic. Uh, just be very careful. Read the fine print. I don't qualify for it because I'm still essentially working. So if I were to apply for it, they would send me the money. But here's the catch. They're going to find out next time I file my taxes that I was working and making more than $1,000 a month during this month. So I don't qualify for it. So they would send me the money now just to get everybody taken care of. But next tax season, I would have to pay every cent of that back. We don't have pennies anymore, so every nickel would have to go back to the government. Uh, and if I spend it, well, I'm going to have to come up with it somewhere, right? So be very careful when applying for the Canadian Emergency Relief Fund during this COVID-19 pandemic, because you may have to give it back if you end up not qualifying, all right? Feels like easy money now. They're going to come back and get you. I have a feeling that next tax season is going to be quite the gong show. And a lot of people are going to owe the government money because they took the money now and didn't qualify for it and they're going to have to pay it back next tax season. So just be careful. Read all the fine print. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. I figured I'd just throw that in there because uh, living, well, growing up with my mom, she's been an accountant for 40 years. Now she owns her own business. Uh, and uh, she's really good at it. He's really good at it, and uh, you always got to remember, the tax man's going to come knocking. Nothing is free, okay? If you really need it, it's there for you. But if you don't qualify for it and you take it, they're going to come for you. <laughs> so we'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, more trucking tomorrow. We got another 1,100 kilometers to go yet, or about 700 miles. We're not going to make it all the way there tomorrow, but we'll make it close. Should be fun. I'll see you then. Thanks for hanging out. Don't forget to subscribe, eh? Click on my face there and go and subscribe to my channel. We're like 2,000 away from 100,000. We're so close. Help me get there. Let's do this together.